Hi, CG here with the Rocketry Show. Since I've talked about baffles and I've talked about using baffles in Nezru, I figured we'd put together this video here um, using the uh, Nezru as part of the whole visual aid since we can only do so much. Don't mind the fact that my head's out of the, not in the picture. I don't really care about my head being in the picture. This is the star here, Nezru. Um, so when we talked about the, the little baffles um, that, you know, with the, with the two tubes, and I described it being the black section here uh, between the white and the Nezru uh, maroon parts. Uh, this is the area here where the two tubes lift. So there's a tube that comes from the base going up and another one um, coming down. So the air goes through one tube, has to zigzag around and go out the other tube. And this section of Nezru is where the um, parachute lifts. And so, um, and uh, I have to talk about this in some other show, my whole uh, anti-zippering method here, but uh, this is the top of the baffle here where the um, eye bolt, eye hook lives. And let's see if we keep that in focus there for you. And so if it happens to be going at a high velocity, rather than uh, the Kevlar ripping through the side of the airframe tubing, it just pulls against this, which is pretty heavily reinforced. And this is where the air exits on the baffle on the two tube design here. Uh, I'm going to show in a picture here um, how that works. Uh, you've got the one, the two tubes, and they kind of are um, one's facing down and the other's facing up, and it's kind of forms an S-shaped flow for the air to go through. It's a modification of a design I saw elsewhere on the uh, internets, intertubes, as it were, and uh, so that one works pretty good. Um, it just takes up a lot of space, as you see. There's a fair amount of space here, but. Not too bad, but it does. The other baffle, which is the half moon baffle I talked about, uh, lives in this section of Nezru here. Now, since this thing is trying to focus on my face, I'll get my face there. Okay, so it lives in this section here of the rocket. And it also forms uh, a connection point, coupling connection point. So what we're going to do, is, and then there are screws in here that hold it all together. So I will disassemble this, and you can see how it all comes together uh, and takes apart. And we'll do that right now. So here we are at the uh, looking at the table here in the uh, Rocketry Show studio. And I'm going to take apart this section of Nezru where the, um, the Half Moon Baffle lives. It lives inside here. So now we've got Nezru here on our little desk here. Let's get this thing in focus here. And I've taken apart the, uh, taken the upper section off just to make it easier to manage. And we've got the upper baffle, which we'll look at in a little bit. Oh, we might as well look at that now. So we can take this apart and show you um, the baffle part here. So we'll play our handy dandy high speed rocketry show music while we take apart uh, this section of Nezeru. Live and on camera. And yes, there are screws here for doing the job. Alrighty, so hopefully we'll be able to keep this in focus while we're working on this here. And taking this apart. And once again, this is the S-channel type baffle that we're going to show you where the gases come in. You can't really see where it comes out because the uh, upper section is permanently attached there, but uh, we will wiggle this off. This part of the rocket has been taken apart in a while, so it takes some manipulating. Okay, so if we look inside of here, you can see Two, the double tubes in here where the, um, uh, let's see here where we have our, where the gases come in. Let's see if we can get this to focus on that part there for you. So you see the two holes where the um, gases come in. And then there's another set of double tubes that are on this side, but they vent on this side of the tube, which you can't see where they vent. So the idea is the gases come in this way, zigzag around, exit out that one. I'll show you this picture here how that works. So that is the 
um, main parachute deploy ejection baffle for Nezuru. Uh, this the twin rocket Ares, its sister rocket, has a uh, triple half moon type ejection baffle for this section of of that rocket, and that works very well too. So now we're going to, and I guess we can show you how the uh, ejection charge works on here by taking apart this section of Nezuru. Nezuru gets smaller now as we take apart all this. But this is just simply a tube where um, when there's an ejection charge, uh, I use these uh, little um, centrifuge tubes that fit down inside of the hole in there and they kind of blast and direct the charges upward. In fact, since it's flight a little over a year ago, I see floating around here uh, the little cap right in there. Got some black powder residue in here. I'll just dump that out on the studio table. <laughs> so we'll take this apart. And then this part comes off. Um, from here. So the ejection charge will actually sit in here and out the back, the wires just kind of come out, try to keep as much pressure forward as we can. And, um, and then internally this sits over top, this sits over top of this part, just like that inside. Um, and the wiring comes out and connects to this. Now, the reason I, I, the reason why I do this is it keeps all the residue, which you see has built up on this part out and away from all the electrical connections. And they stay nice and clean, uh, so I don't have any corrosion or anything going on on the you know, on the wire terminals. This is the electronics bay, by the way. So a Nezru. So Nezru still uses a conventional avionics bay um, with the switch band and everything, and it all just kind of connects here like that. Now there's conduits because. Um, which is this running down the side and as it separates here you see that there's well you could probably barely make out there's a couple of pins here and they connect to there this is for the um, apogee charge so it'll go down the conduit here and into the compartment here where the apogee charge lives and that's how I put that behind the baffle which is here which is where we're getting to but this right here is the electronics bay and it also ha is where the um, wireless communications for telemetry lives with my experiments with that. And uh, the little beeper here, the amplifier for the stratologer to make sure that's nice and loud there. Okay, so now we're gonna take apart the, uh, the baffle here for the Apogee uh, and show you what that's about. So we're gonna just start by taking apart this coupler section, which uses the baffle as the primary uh, means of coupling these two pieces together. So we're gonna go ahead and take this apart here. Put the uh, screws that are on here. And again, you probably notice in this show, I talk about how there's all these screws and everything in the rocket that people assume at first as detail until they see me actually taking it apart. Um, it's all, this is all part of the modular design of the rockets. And this rocket can be disassembled all the way down to the internals of the fin can here. So that's, I can easily do repairs and uh, replace any section as needed. Um, so I, well, actually, most of the outer sections of Nezru here, <laughs> the outer airframe sections are fairly new, uh, not original to the rocket. The uh, original parts are all internal, including these fins, which are the original and the internal pieces that make up the sub internal structures of the rocket, they're all original. But a lot of the outside has been dinged up over time with, <laughs> and been replaced. So as we take apart these two sections here, uh, what we'll show you here is this is where the half moon baffle lives. And uh, that one comes out as well. Kind of stubbornly comes out because it's been kind of sitting around since its last flight, so it hasn't been cleaned out yet. But here's the baffle here. Um, and this particular one has two half moon baffles in it, which are part of the original design. 
And then what uh, I ended up having to, what I ended up adding later on the outside part, just to be clever, was a third, which helped keep some of the soot and residue down that was getting past in the rock, getting past all the, the other two before. So this is like a later retrofit. And it actually worked because it cut down a lot on the, on the residue in here. Uh, that came through as we can see here the red part now is pretty clean after uh, a couple of flights and this is actually what you're seeing is the actual uh, amount of grit and black powder residue that happens after two flights because this rocket like I said has not been clean since then so as part of me taking it apart now I will be doing that um, and this is where the harness attaches and inside here right, I mentioned there are these T-nuts that I kind of basically flip around backwards and they are mounted internally here and uh, and and um, epoxied in place. So that gives me a, play, a point to where I can screw the parts in. And when these come together inside the rocket, um, the holes line up to holes that are here around the outside of the of that section. And this one, I, what I did is I made a, um, uh, a a piece that's it allows me to expand out the diameter of the airframe slightly. You can probably see that it it kind of tapers outward. And I did that with uh, some wood filler and, and another piece of airframe tubing that I cut a slot in to allow it to open up. And then I made it so that it fits around the um, conduit here for the ejection charge, for the apogee ejection charge. So when they all come together, these pieces kind of slide in place and then the pins plug together to connect, that completes the connection between, electrical connection for the ejection charge, which lives inside of this door here. So that's how I use the baffle as a coupling mechanism that I can take apart and put back together again. And even without the screws in it, it's nice and sturdy and, uh, it's a great design that I kind of came up came up on kind of in a weird dream state <laughs> one day, which ideas tend to come about that way. Let's get this thing to focus there. There we go. So we will open this up now so I can clean these parts later so that they come together, they come apart a little bit smoothly. But that's that section here. Again, I use centrifuge uh, tubes for ejection charges. So the centrifuge tube lives here. Uh, and that's where the electronics fire off the uh, uh, ejection charge at Apogee. And then as a backup, there's the motor uh, ejection charge on this one. So in a sense, in essence, in this rocket, uh, what, I, what I have here is a stuffer tube. And you can see it's, it goes clear through. So the motor ejection charge goes through after the fact. But they're both behind this baffle, uh, this half moon baffle. And that is the main reason for the conduits that run down the rocket is to get the Apogee charge behind the baffle that's back here. And just for uh, completeness, I will show you the door, what's inside door number one here. So I'll pull these off. And this rocket has been, you know, um, flying well, the original parts of this rocket have been flying for about seven years now. Um, like I said, like most of it's been uh, on the outside. Most of the parts you see of the rocket outside of the fins have been replaced uh, over time, um, especially after the first flight. If, if uh, you see a picture of Nezru in its first flight, it has a slightly different color scheme to it um, versus what you're seeing right now. And that's because shortly after its main flight, because shortly after its main flight here, um, you know, the original parts were damaged. So it had to be replaced from falling out of the sky at 1,700 feet and hitting the ground pretty hard. But the fins and everything stayed intact. So behind this door are the connections for the Apogee charge. And again, the the little centrifuge tubes make it so that the all the black powder and everything lives outside of all this, and it's just two wires that come through here. And the idea again is to keep the black powder from um, blowing back into this space. 
um, and so it stays nice and clean. And part of how I um, do that is I'm able to seal this. So I have a thin layer of silicone around uh, this opening here, and then I kind of lightly grease it so that when I put the door on and screw it down, uh, it creates a seal so you don't get any air wanting to flow backwards, which would also pull black powder residue in around the electronics. So like, try to keep as much of it going forward as possible when the charge goes out. So that's the uh, how the baffle scheme it works into, or what I do as a baffle scheme for my rockets, and also how it fits into the whole modular design of the rocket. And this, this scheme you see now kind of evolved a little bit over time. Um, and it's slightly different on rockets that are made after Nezru. And that's something I can get into uh, at a future date where I was able to um, do away with a lot of things to make other rockets lighter. So Nezru, Nezru tends to be a pretty heavy rocket because there's a lot of parts engineered into this uh, rocket design here. And over time, I've managed to make uh, other designs that can do the same thing, but with fewer parts and lighter parts. So I'm able to shave quite a bit of uh, weight off of uh, rockets, including the sister rocket to Nezru Ares, which gets me about three or 400 feet higher than Nezru can go on the same motor because of the savings and weight. So there you go. Some ideas for you on the ejection baffle and some ideas behind the rocket here. A little supplemental thing for you here on the rocketryshow.com. And we'll see you later.